Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here, and today with the third property of the LTI systems, that is causality. So now again, depending on causality, we have causal and non-causal systems, right? So if we define a causal system, we don't have a future value for that. For causal, so I would just write is not equal to future, right? And a non-causal could have anything. Non-causal is equal to past, present or future, whatever it is. So these are the two on the basis of causality, right? So now again coming uh, in the impulse response form. So we know that y of n is equal to summation k running from a negative infinity to positive infinity x of k h of n minus k. So now again this k is varying from negative infinity to positive infinity. So this has past values, present values and future values. So the first case is that when k is less than n, this is your past value. When k is equal to n, this is the present value. And when k is greater than n, this is the future value. So have a look. Now for a causal system, for a causal system, I do not need this for causal, right? So if my k is greater than n, what do I have? n minus k would be less than 0. Right? n minus k would be less than 0. So which means in that particular case, I need no output. I need this thing that is h. The impulse response, I need h to be 0. Right? So that is the case that when uh, for a causal system, for a causal system, what do we have? My impulse response h of n, let this n minus k be represented by a single value of time n, this h of n would be 0 for negative values of n. This is your criteria for causal systems for non-causal what do you have for non-causal h of n is not zero of course for n less than zero so this is the criteria fine similarly similarly if you talk about the uh, discrete continuous time as well so if you have y of t which is like this x of tau h of t minus tau d tau so again you have a, a, when your tau is uh, less than t right tau is less than t this is past tau equal to t is present and tau greater than t this is future so this is the value that I don't require. So when tau is greater than t, we don't require, we need the output to be zero, which means if I, I have an input, so what can I do? We are dealing with the impulse response. So I make the impulse response zero. That is h of t, I make it zero. For what values? For the negative values of time, for t less than zero. Because t minus t would be, t minus tau would be some negative value and I replace it with a single variable and some value of time t, so that would be the case. So this is the case for causality. Let me check if we have an example or something. h of n is u of n. Is it causal? h of n. Is u of n. So is it causal? So have a look. The impulse response is given. It's a unit step function. You know that it exists only for the positive values of time. So what do we mean? We know that u of n is equal to 0 
for negative values of time, which means that this is a causal system. Fine. Similarly, we have another function. What is this? The impulse response is given h of n, which is let's say delta of n minus delta of n plus 1. So have a look. What do we have? We have a function which is consisting of two impulses. So one impulse is lying at the negative side at n minus 1. So we have a value at n equal to minus 1. So which is uh, a non-zero value, right? So what do you have? This system is a non-causal system. Isn't it like this? It is. So let me check if we have any other point in the book. Causality is done. Now, okay, you have some examples. Accumulator and the first difference is causal. Yes, accumulator and the first difference is causal. Delay is a non-causal system for t not less than zero. So you read it out from the book. Uh, another uh, important point is over here. The condition of initial rest. Yeah, so this is something important to discuss. Condition of initial rest. We saw it in the in the video of causality. Condition of initial rest. And what did it say? That the output would be zero. The output would be zero, y of t, let's say it would be zero until the point that your input is zero. Fine. So you know this, right? That the output will be zero until the point that input is zero. So we discussed it in the causality or linearity video. But let's say over here, let's say if we have an example that y of t is x of t plus some value let's say 3 so have a look from the previous definition we know now that this is a memory less system right you know that this is a memory less system and we also know that this is a nonlinear system and we also know that this is a causal system So, we know that this is a causal system, but if you check for the condition of initial rest, that is if you have y of 0, so this would give you 3, which is not equal to 0, so which means that the condition of initial rest is not satisfied. The condition of initial rest is not satisfied, although, although it is a causal system. It's a causal system, but it's not satisfying the condition of initial rest. So what does this mean? This means that condition of initial rest applies only to linear systems. Condition of initial rest applies only to linear systems. So we had this system non-linear, so, so, so this is not applying the condition of initial rest. Although this is a causal system. Now you check for the time invariance as well. Time invariance is your homework, and I believe this would be a time invariance. Is this an LTI system? Well, it's not linear, so definitely it's not an LTI. So let us have some points from the book, if we have any. Okay, this is the third property, right? Uh, causality. So, that it's not linear, however, it is causal and it's memory less. So, it does not satisfy the condition of initial rest, fine? And that's it. That's it for it. So, condition of initial rest applies only to linear systems. So, the next property. So, say I remove the board. The next uh, and the fourth, that is the last, is stability. Stability. So, 
we know that we have stable system, unstable system. A system would be stable if it satisfied the BVO criteria. Bounded input, bounded output. That's it. Now we come to it in the in the what? In our own manner. That is our own uh, equation, which is y of n is x of uh, oh wait 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 summation of k x of k h of n minus k right now what do you have now i limit my my input to be some bounded value what do you have say the input x of k the magnitude of this input is let's say a finite value b fine for all values of n okay for all values of n for all n so now what do you have so let me put it uh, over there finding the magnitude y of n so this would be equal to some uh, the, the, the magnitude of uh, or first they have written it like this uh, that you uh, they have taken the magnitude of both the sides uh, x of k h of n minus k fine and now uh, they have taken the summation outside of the of the absolute so y of n absolute is what uh, this word now equals summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity and now you have the absolute that is x of k and h of n minus k so now you have a property that the that the sum of the absolute the sum of the absolute would be no longer so it would be less than or equal to the absolute of the sum this is the property of mathematics that the sum of the absolute would be no longer than the absolute of the sum fine so this is what i have written now i do what uh, now i put in the values so this implies that my y of n uh, is equal to less than or equal to so i put the value b and i take it outside of the integration as this some finite constant so b and the summation remains negative infinity to positive infinity and you have your your h of n minus k remaining so now for a system to be stable what would be the case for stability what do we need we have already provided a bounded input we need now a bounded output this is the condition y of n should also be less than infinity so we have something in multiplication b that is all right that is already a constant we have something other in multiplication we need this to be a finite number so we multiply a finite with a finite to get a finite so for stability the condition is what the condition is that the summation that k is running from negative infinity to positive infinity h of n minus k this summation should be a finite number should be less than infinity or if I write it in words, the condition is that the impulse response should be what? Should be absolutely integrable. The impulse response should be absolutely integrable. This is what the condition is. And you're not telling me, okay? This is not integrable. If the if this is absolutely summable. Now integrable I remembered because I want it. 
to have the discussion on the discrete the, on the continuous time as well if this is your discrete time now for continuous time what do you have y of t would be like this fine so let my x of t again be some finite value x of tau is if less than some finite value b so again you put it in the integration so y of t you would get what less than or equal to uh, this step b times b times the integration negative infinity to positive h of t minus tau with respect to tau so again what would be the condition the condition is that the impulse response that is negative infinity positive infinity uh, wait h of t this should and the absolute this should be less than infinity which means again that the impulse response should be absolutely integrable so this is the condition fine now if you have some example over it example is that h of n is delta of n minus n naught so example the first h of n is delta of n minus n naught so what do you do you would sum it right so i would sum the impulse response from negative infinity to positive infinity and i would take the absolute of it so now you know that this is what this represents an impulse that is located at n equal to n naught and it has a value one so it's only located at one position that is n naught the other is zero this is one this is some finite value which means that this is absolutely integrable so uh, absolutely summable so this is a, a a stable system similarly if i have another response if the impulse response is equal to the step signal in that case what do you have so in that case if i sum it uh, u of n so you would be taking the absolutes and you would be adding it all together and you know that this would equal infinity and infinity would mean that this is an unstable system and that's about the stability that's about the stability of lti system absolutely integrable right so delta of n minus n naught is done uh, u of n unstable because the constant input gives rise to an output that grows without bound the impulse response to the integrator h of t would be uh, this is not absolute. similarly you have the integrator or the or the summer so so what does the integrator do let me do one of them so let's say i do the integrator integrator what does it do y of t is equal to its it, it does it from negative t to your t x of t dt something like this right let me check in the book d tau let's say let's say we make this tau negative infinity to t so you have an x of tau and 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 d tau so the impulse response of this integrator h of t this would be equal to uh, delta of t right you know this so now if you sum the uh, this impulse response uh, negative infinity to uh, to to what to positive infinity uh, uh, no 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 I, I made a mistake I made a mistake the 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 impulse is found is found out by giving it this so h of t 
is equal to negative infinity to t you give it an impulse signal delta of tau d tau this would give you u of tau u of t right u of t now this is the impulse response now you check it from negative infinity to infinity you get a u of t uh, a dt or tau or whatever so this is giving you infinite so which means that an integrator or the summer is an unstable system as we have already seen accumulator right so that's all about it okay i'm feeling a little tired that's all about stability that's all about the properties of ldi system that's all about this topic see in the next lecture with the next topic very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you and do remember me in your prayers goodbye